Hello and welcome to the World of Asphalt webcast. No before you go. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Tim Wilson and I'll be the operator for our presentation. Now just a few notes before we get underway. I want to take a moment to acquaint you with a few features of this web event technology. At any time, you may adjust your audio using any computer volume settings that you may have. Also, a feature that we encourage you to use is on the right side of your screen. You'll see a Q&A window. There's a large window which holds all of your sent messages and a smaller text box at the bottom where you can type in questions. And you can do this at any time during the presentation. To send in a question, click in the text box, type your text, and when finished, click the send button. And to ask a question through your iPad, click the Q&A window and click within the smaller text box to type your text. And when finished, click the send button. All questions that you submit are only seen by our presenters and they'll be addressed in the order in which they were received and addressed at the end of the presentation during the Q&A period. With that said, it's my pleasure at this time to present our show management panel from AEM. We're joined today by Mary Bukovic, Trisha Mallett, Trish Schuf, Steve Sum, Angela Weller, and Brian Larson. And with that, uh, it's my pleasure at this time to turn the microphone over to Mary Bukovic. And Mary, the audience is all yours. Great. Thanks, Tim. Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us for Know Before You Go. The uh, world of asphalt is just around the corner, and we want to make sure that you have all the information you need um, to be ready and know um, where to find things and so forth on site. Before we get into all the details with those logistics, I just want to share some attendee and show overview information because I know that's always helpful for everyone. We're really excited with our numbers and our trending is looking really well. As you can see on the attendee side, we're 8% ahead in contractors from last show. Um, we've seen a 3% jump in the public sector and our customers and producers are up a whopping 32% from the last show. For just some comparisons, we're 11% ahead of where we were in Baltimore and 23% ahead the last time we were in Texas, which was in 2013 in San Antonio. Um, with regard to the Houston and specifically the location there, we're seeing a bigger draw in our field operators and fleet management job category. So a lot of those people are coming. And not only that, we're seeing some trending with a larger group from larger companies. So those companies are bringing more of their staff in there into the show. So I think you'll have some good engagement with all the attendees that are there and just being able to meet, you know, more people within your, your customer's um, organization. Very quickly, too, we have 309 exhibitors, and we're taking up 122,015 net square feet. So we're a nice size um, for the show as well. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Steve, who's going to talk about marketing, our social media, and PR. Steve? Yep. Thanks, Mary. Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining today. And I'm going to talk about the uh, you know ways that you can still take advantage of some of the tools, uh, some of the tools that we have to offer you in regards to promoting your booth, promoting your presence, uh, pre pre show, during the show, and even after the show. The first one there that you can see on your screen is two items that hopefully you can get done this week. Uh, one is going through our marketing kit and executing a free email through the marketing kit to offer your current customers, your prospective customers, the opportunity to meet with you at World of Asphalt um, and visit your booth. And we often get questions as to, you know, if you guys already are sending out emails, why should you use this email client? And, my response to that has always been that, uh, that the service that we use sends out millions of emails a year and they have very strong relationships with the firewalls and the, uh, the, um, the spam blockers that are out there and our deliverability rates are extremely high for emails and, and those that are familiar with email marketing know that deliverability rate is a big component of that. So uh, we typically get very high deliverability. Uh, and then the other part of that is making sure that if you're launching a new product, if you're launching a new product, to submit that new product as part of the uh, new product technology program, uh, both of these items that are on the screen you can find in the dashboard. 
what this new product submission is, is, is a communication vehicle not only to prospective attendees who go onto our website to do research on you, the exhibitor, but you're also communicating that new product or hot product even to our marketing team here at AEM. And what we typically do then is take those new products and we use that as part of our promo emails that we execute not only to our prospective attendees but our registered attendees. So it's really you know free advertising and it's something that uh, you know you guys that are, are participating in this webinar uh, kind of get the jump of, jump of the gun here to do that those that may not be aware of it. So please try and get that done by the end of the week. Okay. Talk a little bit about social media. So um, new for World of Asphalt this show is we have a, a team of social media staff that are involved on our end. But we're only successful as if uh, you know if our exhibitors, um, you the exhibitors, engage with us. So please, you know, right now during the show and even post show, post about what's going on at World of Asphalt, what's going on in your booth, and um, using the hashtag World of Asphalt and using the at World of Asphalt too if you want to talk directly to us on Facebook or Twitter. Um, and you know the other part of it too is keeping in mind that attendees. You know, the week of a show, we're finding this not only for World of Asphalt, but our other events and Con Expo, Con Ag, and IQ. It's like this time period now, all the way through the end of the show, social media gets its highest amount of traffic. So you want to really be actively out there engaging with those uh, individuals in our industry that participate in those channels. Additionally, we uh, something new that we're doing is there are two sponsors per week leading up to the show on a first-come, first-served basis. And uh, that also includes the week of the show. And uh, to learn more about that, you can contact your, your sales rep. And we'll, I'll get into a little bit more detail on that um, in a second because we are also going to talk about the online directory upgrades that are available to you. Similar to social media, uh, you know, with the amount of traffic that our social media channels are getting, um, our website is getting a high amount of traffic right now. These, that, these couple of weeks, probably the last, um, preceding two weeks, and then of course the week of the show and a couple weeks after the show, we get a lot of web traffic. And what attendees primarily are doing is they're saying, well, let me see who's exhibiting. Okay, um, I'm semi-familiar with this exhibitor. Let me click them to learn more and to see where their booth is. Well, when they click to learn more, they're getting to your directory page. And there's several different options you can see on the screen there as far as what options you have to upgrade that page and what the attendees see. And um, what's important to note is that over the last few years, we've done away with the printed on-site show directory. So our attendees more and more are leaning on this technology to plan their show and to research the exhibitors that are going to be there. So please keep that in mind. Uh, just a few statistics real quick. I mean, uh, the last show we typically get about uh, 3,000 different visitors, unique visitors to these pages, these Map Your Show pages. And uh, last show we had over 6,000 leads, or the exhibitors generated over 6,000 leads from their online listing. Okay. Okay, and then talking a little bit about uh, the public relations uh, opportunities that are available to you. And, you know, first off, media coverage. You know, our industry has you know very strong media presence, and they really lean on World of Asphalt to get the world of, to get the asphalt news that they need for their publications. And then, of course, they're leaning on you, the exhibitors, to to uh, learn about what's going on in the industry. So to, to share your company news, the most important number and contact you can put in your system is Pat Monroe. Her contact information is up there. What you can reach out to Pat for is uh, you can get an updated list of media who will be attending the show. So that would include the reporter's name, the media outlet, their title, email, and phone number. Um, additionally, if you're hosting a news conference in your booth um, or have a new product launch that you're uh, going to be talking about, Keep Pat in the know along with the publications because you know, her, she has a lot of connections within the industry that she can help out with. The um, next item here is all exhibitors are encouraged to drop off 15 to 20 press kits or media kits in the newsroom, and that's in room 340A. 
what this, what a press kit is, for those that may not be familiar, is just information in regards to uh, fact sheets about your, about your company, exhibitor bios, um, should have your business card in there, and then of course any news releases in regards to product launches or hot products or even uh, product enhancements. And providing that information in a packet format, then what the media does is they come to the newsroom and say, hey, I need to pick up uh, all of your news releases that have been dropped off by the exhibitors, and uh, you get some free write-ups, hopefully, in future publications. Okay. And then um, the only other thing is to, you know, remember that, you know, um, when it comes to promoting your booth and doing things pre-show and being proactive, you know, there are opportunities that exist, and I highly recommend that you take advantage of them. And it does make a difference as far as driving traffic to your booth. So I'm really hoping you have a successful show. And, and thank you for your time. And now I'm turning it over to Trish, who's going to talk about exhibitor registration and lead retrieval. Thanks, Steve. All right. So for those of you who may have not already registered your exhibit staff, I'll quickly run through where you can uh, access that. You can go to worldofasphalt.com uh, and you'll see the arrow there, uh, the exhibitor dashboard. Uh, when you click on there, that will take you to your login uh, as the exhibitor contact. Uh, you log your information in and you register for your badges. Uh, it's the first tile on the uh, top left. Uh, you'll go through at a simple registration process to get the rest of your staff registered who you may not have initially uh, put into the system. When you arrive on site, uh, we open our registration on Monday from 9 to 5. Uh, we recommend you get your badge on Monday to avoid the lines. This will be primarily uh, you as the exhibitors coming in and getting your badges uh, to get access on the floor. Uh, you'll see a picture in the bottom right corner of your screen uh, of the registration location. And the badge pickup area is right at the bottom there. And you can come scan a QR code and your badge will print and you can pick up from uh, the terminal. And so if you do have uh, staff that are not yet registered, we also have our self-registration area so they can, if they need to, register on site. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, registration will be open at 7 a.m. and close at 5. Thursday, registration will close at noon, so that is one hour before the show floor closes. If you're familiar with uh, the Georgia R. Brown Center, we are on the second floor, and so if you are coming from one of the skywalks or parking areas, this will shoot you out right into the lobby area on the second floor where registration will be. Here you'll see some examples of the badge credentials. Uh, the first and second being the most prominent that you'll see, our attendee badge and our exhibitor badge. You will have an E at the bottom of your badge which will indicate the access you will need uh, for the show floor as an exhibitor. The Second, or the, excuse me, the third and the fourth badge, we have our non-exhibiting vendor or supplier badge. This will be indicated with a black ribbon and white text noting a supplier, and media, which will again have a black ribbon and white text indicating media. The lead retrieval services are provided by ITN International. Uh, they will be located at the service desk at the front of Hall A. We recommend that you order in advance if you haven't already your lead, re lead retrieval packages and avoid the lines on site for those that may be ordering as, when they do come on site. So you can access this through the exhibitor service manual and you'll see a screenshot there as to where that is located and you can order all of what all of your lead retrieval needs online. And with that, I will turn it over to Angela. Okay, I am going to review housing and special events with you. 
When it comes to hotels, one of the biggest frustrations is everybody's getting on site and there's you know a short period of time and you just want to get checked into your hotel room. So I wanted to go through a majority of the issues that I get calls on and how to help you avoid those. First of all, at this point, everyone who has a hotel reservation, at least through the show block, should have their confirmation. Please make sure to take a look at those and make sure all of the information is correct. I cannot tell you how many times people have their names flip-flopped to the first in the lab. So when you're at a hotel and they're looking your name up, um, it shows as not having a reservation. It's simply because of a switch around like that. Um, also, check your date. A lot of times people think they have a reservation for a certain date and it was made for the following day. Um, and then also in, in the opposite situation to make sure um, that you didn't arrive a day later than when your reservation was set up for. Um, hotels consider that a, a no-show and they'll cancel your room sometimes between 6 p.m. and midnight the day before, um, depending on everybody, you know, every hotel has a different rule. Um, but if you don't show up on the day you're supposed to and just show up the next day, um, most likely your reservation will be canceled and they'll have your room filled. Um, I get this uh, pretty often. Also, check the hotel and the hotel location. As you know, many big cities, big cities just like Houston, um, might have numerous Marriott's and Hilton's and whatnot. Um, and did you get to the right one? Uh, I've had that happen quite a few different times. And then lastly, who did you make your reservation through? Um, many times people assume that their reservation was made through our official show block with our sh official show vendor who is experienced. Um, and many times when I go to look into the room and I can't find the reservation, we realize that it was made through a different third party. It could be um, Travelocity or Expedia. Um, on our site, we have a company that we use called A-Res. Um, I'm, I'm not able, why we do use this company and recommend them, I'm not able to look up those reservations. Um, again, very frustrating to someone who thinks they have a reservation um, and it's not found. It could just be because of the company it was booked through. Now, if you've kind of double-checked all of that and you're still having issues, you can contact Experience, who is our official um, housing vendor for the show, at the contact number listed on the slide. Special events, why there's quite a few different things going on at the show. We wanted to call out three of the events that either you should be attending or you should be encouraging attendees to um, attend. First is the Rock and Road Reception. We've had this going on for a couple of years. It's held right on the show floor on Wednesday, March 7th from 4 until 5 p.m. The second is the AEM Member Brunch. That's on Wednesday, March 7th at 10 a.m. Um, it's in the AEM booth. And if you are an AEM member, please go on to our website and register in advance so they know you're coming. There's some food ordered and it just makes them um, be able to prepare ahead of time for you. And then lastly, of course, we have our education session. Um, five of our eight session times occur outside of our show hours. Um, so please refer to the map book or refer anybody asking to the map book to, um, to get full details listed there. Session tickets are $100 for a ticket, $260 for three tickets, or $580 for eight tickets. And then it encourages professional development for on-site staff and attendees. So this is not just for the attendees, but this could be for your staff as well. Okay. And for operations, I'll hand you over to Trisha Mallet. Great. Thanks, Angela. Great information. So good afternoon, everybody. Um, like I, we just said, my name's Tricia. I'm going to be um, touching base on operation items and any functions with that. We also have GS, our general contractor, on the line today, and they're going to um, jump in after I get through just a, for a few um, slides to start us off. Um, so with that said, wanted to kick this off just reviewing some very general convention center emergency information. Um, jot these numbers down. These are very important numbers in case of emergency. So th the key thing here is if there's an emergency where you normally dial 911, start with this 713-853-8087 number, the George R. Brown Security Office. You can certainly still dial 911, but it's going to be faster if we go through their in-house security um, to make that connection. The second number you'll see is our World of Asphalt Show Management Office. So once you're on site, 
you have any problems, you're down in your booth, you're on the show floor, you don't want to walk up to us on the second floor, you can call us right at this number and somebody will be there to assist you as well. So take some time, please jot down both of those numbers. Um, the next item, in case there is an evacuation, um, there's going to be a, a convention center, people, people that work for the George R. Brown Security Center located throughout the building, look for them, follow their instructions. Um, there's going to be an overall general announcement through their PA system that will always be advising you what to do as well. Um, and then lastly, just touching on lost and found, any lost and found items are typically turned into our show management office. If we have any of those items, at the end of the show, we do bring them back to the George R. Brown Security Office. So just a heads up with that. If any children should get lost or whatnot, we do um, ask that they're walked to the show management office and we can um, take it from there. All right, next up, we have exhibitor move in and move out. Um, GS is going to get into a lot of this in, uh, in a few slides here, but just wanted to highlight and showcase the move in and move out time. So we're kicking it off with Saturday. Um, Sunday and Monday, um, you should have already received your target dates from GES. And then lastly, move out. The show floor closes at 1 p.m. on Thursday. So move out cannot start until after 1 p.m. on Thursday. And then, of course, we bleed over into Friday as well. Okay, so work pass buttons, what are these? So essentially work pass buttons will be distributed to any EACs, any other individuals that are helping set up your booth, set up or tear down. They don't need to be on the show floor during the show hours. They just gotta stop in the show management office or in any of the um, security checkpoints getting onto the show floor. We'll, we'll, we'll check off your company name, ensure you are with an exhibiting company and we'll issue a work pass button. Um, the, key, the key with this slide right here is that these buttons will only allow access during setup and teardown. If these people should need access during the show, during show hours, you need to make sure you've already purchased a badge like Trisha um, mentioned earlier. So again, if they need access during the show, during show hours, make sure everybody has a, a paid badge that they wear. All right, uh, rules and regulations. Uh, just a, really a reminder for this, uh, go on our website, take a look. All our rules and regulations are posted on our website for all exhibitors. Um, it's important that everybody's compliant with these. We do enforce them across the board for everybody. Um, so I just pulled out just a, key, a, a few key items here on this slide. There's a lot more, but just wanted to first remind everybody of the clean floor policy. Um, which again, GS will probably get into a little more detail here in a bit. All empty crates and packing boxes should be placed in the aisle in front of your booth by 3 p.m. on March 5th. So keep that in mind. Kind of touched on this on the slide previously. No early teardown. So we will have a team enforcing this. What I mean by that is don't start tearing down your booth before one o'clock. You will lose your priority points for the future show. We still have attendees on the show floor. We still have a lot of action happening right up until one o'clock on the last show day. So again, like I said, we will have a team enforcing this policy. And if we see somebody tearing down, we're gonna go approach them and tell them about the policy and, and they can't do that. They have to wait until one o'clock. It's a safety issue as well. So just, you know, please adhere to all those um, rules and regulations. Lastly, just a reminder, height restrictions based on your booth. So take a look, um, whether or not you fit into a standard booth, Peninsula Island, like a standard booth, for example, is, is defined as any exhibits with a depth of 20 feet, regardless if they're in line or perimeter, and so on and so forth. So standard booth has that 10 feet height restriction. So again, let's just make sure we're all prepared before we get on site. There's no surprises. We don't want to go around and have to change up anybody's you know, booth layout or setup. So we want to make sure we're all on the same page for that. All right, wayfinding. So just a couple reminders, go ahead and download the app right now. You can do that by searching for World of Asphalt. Um, there's a lot of good information on there. There's maps of the show floor, location of services, and other helpful information about the show. Um, so go ahead and do that before you arrive. Wanted to call out where some items um, are located on the first floor. Outside Hall A is first aid. Um, the exhibitor service desk also um, inside, but in the front of Hall A. So that will be an area you'll probably visit a few times. Um, on the second floor, there's an info stand. 
and that's right upstairs up in Hall A, but that's where the coat bag check is. And then there's a couple cyber stations down in front of Hall C. We also have a business center up there. So just, a, just wanted to highlight some key areas that are typically um, used by our exhibitors. All right, food and beverage. So we're going to have, with move-in starting on Saturday, we have had discussions with the convention center to make sure we have some options open starting Saturday through Sunday and, of course, Monday. So there's, there's four permanent um, locations, which you'll see under that new restaurant key down there. So we got A, B, C through D. So they're all permanent restaurants that are owned and operated separately from the center, but you'll have some options for food. I know how important this always is for everybody. And then of course, Starbucks is in the building too. So hopefully we'll, we'll be set um, on all food and beverage needs. All right, and then lastly, before I hand it over to GES, just wanted to quickly talk about 2019 right now. Um, we, Space sales have been open for the 2019 show in Indianapolis. Um, the pri priority period ended February 1st. What does that mean? Why is that important to you all right now? Well, if you did get your space app in by February 1st, you're going to be um, able to select our, your space on site at the show. So we do, um, we do pre assign a few exhibitors prior to on site, but the majority of them will be happening on site in Houston on Wednesday and Thursday. So that information is going to be communicated to you very shortly. We're just fine-tuning some in the last-minute details, um, but the space draw is kind of what we call it. It's going to be in a booth in the foyer main level between halls B and C. And like I said, more information is definitely going to be communicated to those few exhibitors that do fall into that, um, that slot. So thank you very, very much. And with that said, I'm going to pass it on over to GES. All right. Thank you, Tricia. Uh, my name is Brian Larson. I'm a senior director here at GES. I'm also going to have a colleague of mine, Jamie Howell. He's going to jump in on a couple of uh, these slides as we go through. Um, some of the areas we're going to cover today, we're going to cover some material handling, also some additional services that GES offers. Obviously, the biggest thing, key shipping dates um, and who to contact and also a few ideas on how to save. Uh, material handling, we're going to cover items like uh, the freight package plan, advanced and direct shipments, uh, POVs, small packages, targeted floor plan and target changes, uh, freight questionnaire, uh, carrier information, uh, empty removal process, show close process, uh, outbound material handling forms, and then the reroute and force freight. On the freight package plan, so what's covered in the package plan? Uh, delivery of all your machinery, crates, displays, skids, anything like that to the assigned booth space. Uh, also, we'll remove any cleaning and blocking that might be on any machinery. We'll help and spot any and all equipment. Uh, we'll remove the crates once they've been emptied out and they're ready and tagged and ready to go. We'll store them during the show and then we'll return them at the conclusion of the show. Um, uh, operators for any uh, self-propelled equipment and planking if needed. Um, uh, obviously deliver all of small packages and then uh, lo loading out your carriers post-show. Items that aren't included in the package plan. So should you send anything to the advanced warehouse, uh, those are not covered in the package plan and there's a, you know, there's a nominal fee for that. Uh, any assembly to any machinery or anything like that. Uh, that is an additional charge. Also, any power washing of any machines is also an additional charge. Uh, any tech, any uh, shipments that show up off target, every booth is assigned a specific target date. Anything that comes in off target, not on the target date, uh, will be charged on a time and material type basis. And then uh, anything that comes in on overtime, uh, there will be a nominal fee for that as well. Uh, Here's just a couple of diagrams of kind of how to send your loads in, you know, how to load the truck, anything that might be on target, put that on the back, off target stuff up in the nose, and then also a little bit of, you know, how to, how to load your truck to make it much easier and much more cost effective for you. Uh, advanced and direct shipments. Uh, advanced shipments uh, can arrive up in the warehouse up to 30 days in advance of our event. Uh, the warehouse is located at uh, 9415 Wallaceville Road in Houston, Texas. 
uh, the shipments that are sent to the advanced warehouse are guaranteed to be delivered to show site by 8 a.m. on your target date. So basically what that means is if you want to get started right away, you've shipped your, all your stuff to the advanced warehouse, you could literally start at 8 a.m. because all your stuff will be sitting there on your target date. Uh, direct shipments, shipments that are coming direct to show site, need to check into the GS Marshalling Yard. GS Marshalling Yard is located at 401 Franklin Street, and there's a, there's a slide a little further in this that kind of shows the, uh, the Google map of where the yard is in relation to the George R. Brown Convention Center. Uh, the Marshalling Yard is open daily, 6 a.m. to 2 a.m. Two, I should be 2 p.m., sorry, 2 p.m., daily for carrier check-in. Uh, there is one note on that. On the day of show close, we will have extended hours. Uh, we will be open on March 8th from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, target date needs to be uh, planned as an unload and delivery day only. Uh, do not schedule labor for these days. It is, uh, we can't guarantee what time you will be offloaded. So please do not schedule a labor call for 8 a.m. on any direct shipments because that will not happen. Uh, setup should be planned for the following day. All right, targeted floor plan. Uh, here's a snapshot of the targeted floor plan. The targeted floor plan is located in the exhibitor service manual, and uh, there is a table of contents on the left-hand side, and it is the third item down. You can click on that and find out your exact target date uh, when you need to have your delivery scheduled for. Uh, again, here's that snapshot of the Martian Yard in relation to the George R. Brown Convention Center. It's just a little bit over a mile away, uh, so it should make it pretty easy for us to get uh, shipments in and out to the Convention Center. Okay, when your carriers check into the GS Marshland Yard, it's important that they either have some kind of documentation, we call them waybills, uh, with following carrier information. They're going to have to know your exhibiting company name and booth number. I know a lot of times uh, these drivers don't necessarily come with that, but those are going to be a delay in the marshaling yard if we don't have company name and booth number. I also recommend uh, if they're checking in and they know what they're hauling, whether that's carpet, hanging signs, or display, they let them know in the marshaling yard so we know how to uh, segregate them and send them over uh, for expediting. That's uh, definitely key. And uh, if you have multiple shipments coming on multiple different carriers, if you can let us know when they check in, which one is priority. All right, the empty removal process. Um, all packing boxes, crates must be stored by the general contractor for the duration of the show. Uh, no boxes or crates can be stored behind the, the exhibitor's back wall, according to the George R. Brown Convention Center fire regulations. Uh, obviously, this could uh, spark a fire with the electrical at some point. Trust me, it has happened. So let's make sure we're storing nothing behind our booth back wall. Uh, the storage of these items are included. There's no extra fee. It's included in the package plan. So just go ahead, slap an empty label on those. And we'll go ahead and take them out, and then we'll bring them back at the conclusion of the show. Uh, empty stickers are available at the uh, exhibitor services desk and also at any freight desk that are at the back of the hall by the freight doors. Uh, empty crates and packing boxes should be placed in the aisle in front of your booth no later than 3 p.m. on March 5th. Uh, please pay attention. You'll hear announcements throughout the move-in process. If you have some crates and some boxes and skids that are ready to go, go ahead and label them early. You do not have to wait until 3 p.m. because we'll be coming by and picking those up on, uh, as they become available starting on Saturday. I'm uh, sorry, Sunday and Monday. Uh, all flammable packing materials such as paper, straw, et cetera, must be totally enclosed in the containers. Um, materials not complying with these requirements will be considered refused and disposed of by the cleaners and thrown in the dumpster. So please, if you want to keep something, even if you're not sure, throw an empty label on it. We'll store it for you during the show. Uh, the show close process, as Trisha mentioned before, show closes on March 8th at 1 o'clock. But for the first hour of that, we will be removing the aisle carpeting. So roughly at about 2 o'clock, that's when we'll start bringing back all of the empties. Uh, exhibitors can start breaking down at 1 o'clock, but just keep, please keep everything contained in the booth. Do not put anything out in the aisles. Uh, at 3 p.m., uh, we're going to start bringing in some uh, – we're going to start taking out some mobile equipment that's near the freight doors and just kind of – 
start getting the floor a lot more clear as we bring in the empty uh, crates and containers. Uh, usually bringing in the empty cartons and crates take, is anywhere from a six to eight hour process after the carpet's been removed. So please be patient. You know, some of these things might take quite a bit depending on when we picked up, you know, your crates and your boxes from you. Uh, outbound shipping. Complete the outbound material handling form must be turned into the GES service desk. Please don't leave it in your booth or leave it on your shipment. Please take it to the GES service desk. That way we know it's ready to go. Uh, carriers will need to check in at the GS Martian Yard for dispatching. Please do not come straight to the George R. Brown Convention Center. You'll just get redirected to go to the Martian Yard. Um, Thursday, March 8, 3 o'clock, carriers uh, post-show can start checking in at this time. Uh, everybody kind of needs to be checked in uh, by noon on Friday for anybody who's going out on Friday, and then at 8 a.m. on Saturday for anybody who's going out on Saturday. Okay, Brian touched on outbound uh, shipping. Uh, it's imperative once your items are packed up ready for shipment that you fill out an outbound material handling form. These forms are located at the GES service desk. They will also pass them out with invoicing as well um, the day prior to the show close. You'll see when you get the forms, all sections in green must be filled out, um, carrier destination and booth number so we can match the drivers that check into the marshaling yard on the outbound. Uh, there's a couple of boxes that you need to pay real close attention to. It's going to be for who's picking up the shipment. A lot of times we'll have uh, carriers check in. Say you set up a, a carrier and it's Bob's Trucking, but Bob Bob's Trucking sends that off to somebody else to broker the load and, and pick up. We need to have the actual physical carrier that's going to do the pickup in order for us to match that in the Marshland Yard. Uh, there are two other boxes down uh, after you go through the bill freight charges and it talks about if your carrier does not pick up, do you want GES to ship it for you or would you like us to uh, take it back to our warehouse for your carrier to pick up? Um, those are important just in case we're unable to match or your carrier doesn't check in so we know what we're legally allowed to do. So in the case of carrier does not check in or you do not turn in a bill of lading, uh, there's a couple options. We're either going to have to reroute or force a freighter return that to warehouse. Uh, reroute is when zipper returns in an outbound material handling form but the carrier does not check in. So depending on what you guys chose, if it was going back to the warehouse or you're asking us to ship it, that's how we'll do it. Uh, force freight is basically freight that's left in your booth. Um, and you have not turned any forms in for us. So once again on that, usually it's us. We elect whether we're going to ship that for you or send it back to the warehouse. In most cases, we'll send that back to the warehouse and contact you as well. And then we do have return to warehouse if we're going to end up doing any storage for you as well. I wanted to throw this on for GS Logistics. We do offer service for domestic ground. Uh, Airways is the carrier for international and air, but if you do have any uh, shipping needs, we are located, GS Logistics will be on the floor and they will be located at the service desk. All right, some additional services that GS can obviously assist you with should you need it. Um, we obviously provide carpet. Uh, we provide booth furniture and accessories. Uh, we're also available with custom and rental exhibits if you need any graphics. Uh, any installation and dismantle services we can assist with. We also do the hanging signs, uh, material handling, power wash, if you need assistance with any painting, and then also the assembly of any machines or equipment. Uh, shipping deadlines, uh, the advanced warehouse, that one's approaching very, very fast. Uh, the, uh, the last day that we will accept freight into the advanced warehouse is February 28th at the end of the day. So please, if you're going to do that, make sure you get it there uh, right away and get it in there. A um, couple things of how to save. I mean, the biggest thing here is, you know, your freight arrives on your assigned target date. That way you don't get hit with any time and material charges for off target. Uh, have your all of your freight either crated or skidded. Anything that comes in loose or uncrated and has to be handled by hand, there's additional charges for that. Uh, Carriers, make sure they're providing all the pertinent information for delivery. This always helps to make sure that we don't run into any issues. Uh, 
carrier checking into the marshaling yards on time. That, that's very key. That way you don't run into a possible, you know, force freight situation. Uh, plan your target date as your unload date. Don't schedule any additional booth labor during that time. Uh, don't, that way they're not sitting around waiting for the freight to be offloaded. Uh, scheduling your outbound carriers with accurate days for pickup and also all that accurate information Jamie explained on the outbound material handling form is critical and just you know complete that outbound material handling form as the best you can. Uh, GES is around. We've got a lot of people at service desks. Don't be afraid to ask any questions. Uh, we're, we're there to help and to help you save. And I'm going to turn it back over to Mary. Great. Thanks, guys. Um, I'll go over this real quickly just so we have time for questions. But um, should you need to speak with anyone from GES, um, they have several options. Um, there is the War Room, and Kelly Nash can help you with that. There's also their service center. All their phone numbers and contact information are listed there as well for you to contact directly. GES also has a planning tool that you can kind of go in and, and check your orders and, and download your history. That sign-on information is listed there. And then, of course, um, as we referenced before, the exhibitor dashboard, that is um, just right on the website and another tool that you guys can use to just order information and, and so forth as well. On-site, uh, again, the show management office is in room 211. It's on the second level. The phone number is there, and they're open Saturday, March 3rd, all the way through Friday, the March 9th. Um, a good place to go should you have questions, um, and the service center or something can help you with that. We also have the AEM Milwaukee office that is open that you can call as well should you have questions. It's a, another good resource. There. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Tim just to inter or to remind everyone how to ask some questions, and we'll get some questions answered. All right. We already already have received a few questions, but we invite you to uh, participate now. If you have a question, the Q&A pod is on the right-hand side of your screen. To submit a question, simply type your question into the text box at the bottom and then click send or hit enter on your keyboard. Only our panelists will see your question and will address these verbally as time permits. So again, I encourage you to take advantage of this to have your questions answered. Type it into the Q&A pod on the right side of your screen, right under the World of Asphalt logo. And with that, Mary, let me turn things back over to you. All right, thanks. Our first question is for registration. Where will the barcodes or QR codes be on the name badge for lead retrieval? Trish? Yeah, I can answer that. So uh, ICANN International is our lead retrieval vendor, and they are also uh, our registration vendor for World of Asphalt. Uh, they do use NFC technology, so uh, when you're scanning a badge to collect a lead, uh, the lead retrieval device simply is put on top of the badge, and, is, and the information is collected. Uh, we do have a short video that does show this um, and better illustrates it than uh, how I may be describing right now. Uh, you can find that in on uh, worldofasphalt.com uh, under the Exhibitor tab in the Exhibitor Insider this last month. So it's either in your email inbox or you can go on the website and it's under order your lead retrieval now and avoid lines on site. So it will uh, very quickly in about a minute long video show you how that functions and uh, how you can go onto the lead retrieval itself to add in notes or modify or put a survey in if you so choose. All right, thank you. Next question, Steve, is for you. Um, it's a marketing question. How are you using new product information in promoting the show? Right, so earlier in the uh, presentation I mentioned submitting new products uh, through the dashboard and then the marketing team here will use those. The way we use those is, is a variety of ways. Um, through email to prospective attendees that try and convince them to go to World of Asphalt. Uh, in the last uh, few emails have a section in them that talks about new product launches that are occurring at the show. So whatever information you provide to us, we basically take that information take like a headline or a snippet of it, put it right in that email with a direct link to, um, to your listing and map your show or to that product. 
Um, additionally, you know, there's uh, opportunities that we take advantage of with social media and that will uh, send some posts out. And um, we also then, in general, will use the whole new products and technology section as a promotional uh, tool as part of the pre-show attendee guides that we send out every week prior to the show uh, will be an email to all of our registered attendees. Great. Um, Trish, this one's for you again. Do I need to pick up a work pass if I'm the only person at my booth or will my badge be enough? So badges will be available for pickup starting on Monday at 9 a.m. Prior to that, you will need a work, a work pass button to access the show floor. However, if you pick up your badge on Monday, you'll be able to access the show floor with the same uh, accessibility as that button. So uh, I, again, I would encourage you to come on Monday before attendees start to come in to get their badges when, the, when there are very few lines to get your badge. And by extension to that, if you have staff coming in at a later time uh, during the show week and you want to pick up their badge in advance, you can do so at registration. Uh, the caveat to that is the badge has to be with them to get on the show floor. So if you pick up their badge in advance, you have to let that person know if they go to registration to try to get their badge, they will be told that it was already printed. So just keep that in mind if you do decide to pick up all of your staff badges at one time. All right, thanks. Brian and Jamie, this one's for you. My pickup by Airways is 9 a.m. Friday. Do I need to be there for pickup, or am I good to go if it's all crated up? Yeah, once it's all crated up and the uh, outbound material handling form has been completely filled out and turned into the uh, GES service desk, you're free to go. The only little thing I would throw out there is if there is anything of value, make sure that it's, you know, secured or not out in the open. Uh, you know, don't want to run into any issues with any kind of theft or anything like that. But otherwise, yeah, once it's created, you've turned all your forms in, you're good to go. Great. Uh, Trish, this one for you again, too. Where can the lead retrieval system be picked up again? So this, this will be located in the uh, exhibit services area. This is the front of Hall A. It's kind of a little alcove uh, that the service area will be. Uh, again, it's through ITN International. Um, if you do have any questions in advance or would like to talk in detail with them uh, about lead retrieval or how it works, um, their phone number is online uh, in the exhibitor service manual. Um, I can uh, give it to you now as well. That's 801-676-7933. Looks like we have one last question, unless something else comes in. And Brian and Jamie, this one's for you. How do I ensure that my carpeting and hanging signs are not delayed for installation? Oh, wow, that's a good question. Um, the biggest thing here is just to make sure that everything is clearly labeled uh, separately. Because if it's labeled separately, if you sh like shift your carpet into the advanced warehouse, we'll be able to have that at your booth at 8 a.m. on your target date. That way you don't lose any time, like in regards to the direct shipment uh, process, and you can start laying your carpet right away on your target date. Also, for the hanging sign, make sure that, that one's actually clearly labeled so it's easy for us to identify so that, that when the hanging sign crew comes around, they can access it whenever they're ready and get that flown above your booth before, it's, uh, before you come in to set up anything below the hanging sign. So, yes, good question. Okay, thanks. Looks like we got one more question. Could you answer to the quality of overall cell coverage of the center and or will an overall Wi-Fi be available? Trish? Sure, I can take that one. Um, no, unfortunately there isn't overall Wi-Fi um, on the show floor. Um, and as far as the, the cell coverage portion of it, um, yeah, it's a good point. You know, you get in these big buildings and sometimes there is interference. So um, I haven't you know, I was there walking around and I had some um, phone calls come in and it was fine, but it's not to say that once you're in these type of buildings that sometimes it's not affected. So, um, good question, but it, it sometimes just depends. Okay. And that looks like all the questions we have. So, Tim, I'm going to turn it over to you to wrap up. Okay, well, thank you very much. And I want to thank all of our participants for a very informative presentation today. 
And on behalf of AEM and the World of Asphalt Show Management, I want to thank you for your participation in today's event. When I end the webinar, a post-event survey will appear requesting your feedback. We ask you please take just a moment to complete this survey. This webinar has been recorded and will be posted on the World of Asphalt Exhibitor Education website. Simply click the On Demand tab early next week. And that concludes our program today. We thank you for joining us and hope you have a great rest of the day.